So, the executive supervisor from the European Broadcasting Union, Mr. Jono Nassan. Welcome to Copenhagen. Thank you, it's nice to be here, really. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you like uh, all of this, uh, the circus been made here in Copenhagen on the Eurovision Island? I think it's great that the circus can move around Europe and now to Copenhagen. It's quite a long time since we were here the last time. And I think the, the, the Danish organizers have uh, made a very bold and, and good choice by moving it out to this little island and, uh, and creating a fantastic atmosphere and, uh, and really good facilities. Well, how challenging was it for the EBU to have Denmark ho building a new venue actually for Eurovision? It's, it's always challenging when you are talking about a new venue because that's sort of the core of Eurovision Song Contest. You need to have a good functional venue. And uh, when we decided to approve uh, Rafsalön as the place to be, it was because we trusted the Danish uh, broadcasting company, DR, and also the, the Danish authorities that they would manage to do it. And we gave them a lot of trust and they um, showed us that it, it was possible. It was possible indeed. And how is uh, DR and, and Denmark doing this this year hosting the contest? I think they're doing very well. They have a good creative team in place. Uh, DR is a company with uh, tons of experience when it comes to, to organizing both TV programs and, and events. They uh, have been uh, in the Eurovision, <laughs> Eurovision family for very many years. They have um, good national selection, so they know what they are doing. And also Denmark as a hosting city, a tourist destination, is uh, well capable of welcoming all of Europe to Copenhagen. So did um, the DR have any uh, funny demands on hosting this contest, uh, besides uh, making it on a small island in an old shipyard? No, not really. I think DR and uh, the Danes have been very, um, very good uh, to listen to the advice we gave them, actually and adapt into that. We have a lot of experience at EBU and we managed to, to get DR on board on our ideas and, our, and use our tools to do it. So no specific request from DR, no. But uh, about the delegations, uh, 37 this year, but have you ever experienced any hilarious demands from the delegations? No, but, it's, uh, but every year there are some special uh, delegations that have their special wishes and needs. Often it's regarding to the production. Some are not very happy with what they see on stage. It could be because the host broadcaster actually have misunderstood what this act is about. Or it could be that uh, the, the broadcaster that is bringing the act to the host city really haven't managed to express what they really want. And, and this could be sometimes a conflict, but uh, we always manage to solve it in the end. So uh, there's been a lot of talk about the scandals and the fraud voting claims and all of that. How damaging are they uh, right now for, for the future of Eurovision? Well, I, th I think it's, it's important for us as organizers to keep a close eye on it. We, we, uh, we are uh, absolutely dependent on uh, and perception of Eurovision Song Contest as a fair and, and good competition. And so we are working as hard as we can to, to make sure that we have a good result and a fair result and, and try to, to do what we have to do. And that's why we have changed the rules this year to try to create more openness and transparency and we have good control of it. And uh, we cannot get a, a uh, we have a crisis in uh, Ukraine on Crimea between Ukraine and Russia. And uh, how does uh, di it affect this year's contest? Well, it's, it's a very uh, disturbing and, and, and sad situation what is happening in Europe. And we try as much as we can to facilitate for both the Ukrainian and the Russian delegation to make sure that they can stay here and focus on what they are here to do to perform the best. And, and, and that's actually what we are focusing on. Eurovision Song Contest is not a political event, we uh, have heard, but and now um, yesterday you told that uh, Crimea will uh, vote as Ukraine due to the uh, telephone numbers being operated by Ukraine, um, but it's, it's working okay with the deleg two delegations together here in Copenhagen. Yeah, the two delegations are, f are, are fine. Uh, as I said, I, I, I have talked a lot to them and, and they are both very upset about the situation. 
because they would like to be here to focus on the act. And I, and I also think a lot about the artists who are representing their country and to have to carry this burden on their shoulders. But the, 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 there are no conflict between the delegations here in Copenhagen, and I'm very happy for that. And uh, next year, the Eurovision Song Contest celebrates its uh, 60th birthday. Uh, how will we be celebrating this? We don't know yet, actually, how we're going to do it. We have several options uh, that we are discussing. It could be that we are looking for an event. We have uh, one member broadcasters who, who broadcaster who really wants to put up a huge effort around uh, a big event. Uh, but we're also looking for, for smaller uh, outlets of programming, uh, looking back, looking forward. Uh, and we're also uh, um, thinking about how we can bridge the tree show that we will do in May next year to make it ev stand out even better. Yes, I heard some rumors that uh, the German broadcaster will do something in Berlin next year, but it's not decided yet, I can hear. No, we are working on that actually. As, as I mentioned, there is, is one of the members, and it's NDR from, from Hamburg, who would like to put up a big show in Hamburg, and we're working on that. But it could go in other directions as well. So it could be like um, when Denmark hosted the 50th anniversary in October 2005? could be something like that or it could be different. We, uh, as I said, we're working on it, but we would like to put up a party. I mean, um, 60 year is a diamond jubilee and it would be good to have a party around it, but, but, but we will see. And um, can you give us any clues about the changes that will be in uh, 2015? We've heard there will be some changes. Well, right now we haven't planned for any major changes for 2015. We did some changes this year and, uh, and we are we are working on a little earlier deadline for participation. We think we need more time in order to, to, to talk to broadcasters and not have that deadline too tight uh, actually to the event. Uh, we know that it is a difficult situation for, for many broadcasters in Europe and uh, that's why we want to talk to them earlier and see if we can have them commit earlier to the event. Uh, but no major changes for next year. And uh, back to 2014, do you have a favorite this year? Uh, <laughs> no, actually, I never comment on favorites, but I think this year is a very strong year. Uh, it's a lot of very strong songs and good performances, and it's very difficult for me. I usually I try, I, I start to predict uh, at least the top 10 very early, but I think it's very difficult this year, and, uh, and due to the amount of good songs, a lot of strong ballads, uh, and, and some really good up-tempo songs who are sticking out, so it will be uh, exciting till the end, I'm sure. And this year we had some uh, countries withdrawing. Will you uh, get them back to 2015 and, and how? Well, uh, hopefully we will manage to get some of the broadcasters back. That's, that's what they, they tell us, that they would like to participate. Some of them are in financial difficulties. Some of them actually have logistic challenges and, and would like to s oversee how they are doing their preparations in order to be better prepared for Eurovision Song Contest. Hopefully we will get some of them back. That will be good. Uh, but I think 37, as we have this year, is a very good number. And as you can see when you're here in Copenhagen, it's a massive amount of, uh, of uh, artists and delegations and journalists. So. Um, so if we can keep it at this level, I'm, I'm more than happy. So when I see you at the after party or the day after the grand final, what will uh, it take for the Eurovision to be a success? Well, first of all, uh, that we have had three great TV shows without any incidents or accidents or, or, uh, or technical problems. Uh, that's, of course, the, the core. Uh, that we have uh, a, a proud winner of Eurovision Song Contest and that we have artists that really felt that they were here to represent their country and who did well. I think that's, that's important. And feel that Copenhagen really embraced them. Well, I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay here in Copenhagen under Eurovision 2014. Thank you. Thank you.